Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, this is Lucid. We are hopping back into our game with the Late Age Micklin in the YouTuber series. And uh, it's turn 9. We're going to be doing turn 9 and 10. 10 is my current turn. Um, last episode we had been doing some Diplo with Man, and uh, let's go ahead and see what he just sent us. Um, greeting, greetings, wild folk of the north. The civilized folk of Man are interested in working with the turkey people, but chaff at the thought that you would claim both the Ordos Groves and Kirtha Vineyards uh, when they are both within two provinces of our home territory. While it's true that we can't claim either province yet, we are presently occupied in other directions. We will sit outside these provinces and appeal to your fair nature, all whilst gently strumming our harps and singing gentle ballads to calm your uncouth spirits. Perhaps in time we can find a common purpose and you will share these lands you so greedily take. The Wardens of Avalon. Okay. Um, now we get a message from Satis. Greetings from Satis. We wish this mes message could have been brought to you on better terms, but we feel we must warn the world of a new potential threat. Vile birds have been circling our lands, defiling our statues, and squawking insults at even the smallest, most innocent hatchlings. Uh, our experts scout... Um, followed them back to their homeland, 110, known uh, as Pangea. We are continuing to scout the area and will inform of any further disturbances. So, um, we've also researched some blood magic. I think this was, oh no, it was only blood 2, or blood 1. I'm sorry, blood 2. Uh, so we've hit construction for it. We're running up blood. We are preparing for a very early blood economy. Uh, my goal with Construction is Sanguine Dousing Rods, and my goal with Blood, uh, really, there's a ton of good stuff in here for us, but really we just want Bind Jaguar Fiends. Um, each caster I have casting this will get three out a turn, and uh, my goal really for the early game is to have two people casting this every turn. Um, and that's not that hard to do. I only have to get 20 Blood Slaves a turn. I can pretty easily get that from like two provinces. Uh, and then maybe that will even get me kind of two two castings a turn, and then sometimes three. That will make a big difference uh, in any of my early conflicts. A big difference. Um, these ozolotls are going to be very, very tough, because I can also drop uh, Bloodlust on them, and it's going to make them just absolute killing machines. So, uh, yeah, we're pretty... And we're going to get there fast. Like, if we look at it, um, we have... We're, we're doing nine, or 61 a turn. Right, we're two turns away from blood three and probably like four turns away from blood four, and then we're just gonna kind of speed up alteration. Uh, so that is all fine and good. Um, let's go through the rest of our events. We had a battle here, so let's watch this first one. Um, I think this is our turkey, yeah. Okay, so this is our disciple. And I mean our, yeah, prophet is what I meant to say. And this is the province we lost to the other time, uh, those crossbowmen kind of mowed us down. Uh, but in this case, you can see uh, we kind of closed with the crossbows, and naked archers are not that scary. It's really, there were some heavy infantry, it took us a few turns to chew through, and this will not be a problem. So I don't think we took any losses, yeah. <clears throat> and now this is a bit interesting, this is kind of just some chaff versus crossbows and heavy cab, which actually is kind of tough in terms of indies, so let's watch this one. I don't know if I actually watched this battle when uh, I was kind of actually playing this turn. Uh, once you... I, I think when I first started playing Dominions, I would like watch every battle, kind of, you know, excited and whatnot, and uh, the more I played, the less I really cared to actually watch the battles. I just kind of like would do my formations and see what happened. But it's fun to go back and watch, because you do kind of learn about problems and stuff in your tactics. So my guys were on attack close, I don't know if you noticed, my birds came down here and attacked, and that was actually pretty important, because I don't want my birds jumping back here, because these crossbowmen, they have short swords, and they would chop my little birdie warriors up. Um, but, you can see now, okay, they're gonna engage in combat for a round or two, but then my jaguars very, very quickly get into uh, melee range, and uh, they are fine. So, uh, that was totally fine. Uh, you can see we lost basically nothing of value, a Hoburg Militia and a normal Militia. So, uh, all in all, pretty good. Um, it is 
early winter in the first year, and we're taking two provinces per turn. Uh, though, okay, we're not going to be taking two this turn. We're actually going to be taking none this turn. Um, a part of it, too, if you remember the end of the last episode, this will be a little weird looking at this map, because I had said my guy was here and I attacked this way. I had said, oh, we're going to move and attack up this way. And I had done a totally different set of move orders. Uh, I forgot to submit those. So this was like when I started that turn in that last episode. Uh, this was the move order I had put in at the beginning that I then changed as we were going through it where I moved over this way. So anyway, um, the problem is I... I do want to get this, especially since we're in winter, it is possible that man can cross this river. Uh, in fact, I think it's likely, since these are both cold. I don't know why it's showing this as a as impassable. It should probably be passable by man. Um, and the rest of the year, it's going to be cut off unless he can go through here. So, uh, that being said, we do want to move over this way and take this before man can. Um, and we'll have a pretty good territory with a lot of rich lands. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll be looking pretty damn sharp. So um, we also are doing quite good on our infrastructure. We have uh, this, uh, which is gonna, this palisade, which is going to be coming up in two months, and then we're going to be building a temple here. One thing I didn't really talk about is if you go to build a palisade, uh, where can we kind of just at least look at it? Like pretend we were to build, you know, a palisade here. It's five months. Normally Palisades are four months, but with Miklin, they're more expensive. They're 750 and they're longer. Um, the difference is we get a commander point bonus. So you, what that means is we can, even with just the Palisade, we'll get two commander recruitment points a turn instead of one, which you normally only get one with a Palisade. So that means with just the Palisade, we can get a mage per turn. So uh, it kind of works itself out to the same. Um, but it is a little annoying because we can't start like Jaguar production quite as soon as we otherwise would be able to. Um, so yeah, anyway, we've got, uh, this one, which is coming up in two months and we're starting to build the temple, right? Cause this turn we'll build a temple, next turn we'll build a lab and then we'll start cranking out our Miklin priests to get our blood economy going. Um, this one is building a palisade too. We will be at, um, excuse me, we'll be at... Uh, we'll have this one going up in three months. What I'm doing is this battle up here, I'm taking this preacher and I'm pulling him over this way. Uh, and that way this guy can actually get a turn of research and then next turn we'll kind of group up some other dudes to pr probably attack this or something. So um, anyway, I'm also recruiting a Hoberg champion here. And he or somebody is going to probably build a uh, fortress here. This is a really good province to fortress. I can get these Hoberg crossbows if I want to. Uh, I'm not sure I will. I'm also kind of waiting for people's dominion to push into my lands. Like, I would much rather have this guy's dominion in my lands than the crappy stuff I have. Um, so anyway, that would be good. Uh, what else? The other thing, too, is in, in games that go really late, you really don't want enemy dominion in your lands. Uh, especially... You know, people can put up Vengeful Waters and stuff, and Wrath of Gods, and Purgatory, and all sorts of things. I mean, Purgatory is not bad against me, but there's all sorts of stuff they can put up that would be really, really bad for me. Uh, but fortunately, because this game is not going to go that late, since we have um, the uh, the Horrors coming at turn 40, uh, I'm not really worried about that. So we are going to do zero Dom pushing. Or not zero, but pretty freaking close. Probably keep it in like two or three provinces. Um, for those of you drinking with this episode, I have a white Russian. Um, if you are mixing one up also, please uh, please comment below. Uh, anyway, okay, so uh, we are building a new palisade here. So this is going to give us three in the next turn or the turn after we'll build a palisade here, which will give us four. I may not be able to build this one next turn in this province because I'm going to need to build a temple here as well as a lab here. That's going to cost a lot of money. But then the turn after, I probably will be able to start construction. And what I expect is we should be able to get five Jaguars per province out of each of these. Um, so between just three forts, that will be 15 a turn. Uh, very shortly thereafter, I will have my Aussie factory going, which will be giving me like six of the Aussies a turn. And then plus my capital is going to be making like five or six, probably like six flyers. So we're going to be making like 12 flyers a turn, 15 ground troops a turn. 
And, uh, yeah, I may do another batch of Water Warriors. My first batch are going to be coming out this turn. We're going to be having uh, this King of Rain leading, um, what is it, 18 of these guys, my Rain Warriors. Um, and they're not great, but they'll be, they'll be okay. So uh, that is basically it for this turn. I think we're going to go ahead and pull up the next turn. Oh, wait, we need to do Diplomacy. I did do something there. My dog is going freaking crazy outside. He hates my neighbor. Okay, so uh, I, I'm kind of trying to do a fair bit of Diplo here. And Diplo is going to be important. Um, I'm not super worried about getting ganged up on, but I'm a little worried. I think some of you in chat are probably a little more worried than I am. One of the things, and it actually bears... Um, mention is that unless you have kind of like a really hard counter next to you, um, getting ganked up on is not always bad. Uh, what you can usually do is you figure out which of the players kind of match up you're weakest against, and you can do some crafty things uh, just defending that border using a fair amount of PD backed up by some sacreds and mages, um, and just basically kind of efficiently hold down a border. And then sometimes, like, just tinker raid out past it. And then somebody who you're strong against, you can uh, basically take a lot of their land. So basically, if, like, three people attacked me, one of them I would probably be doing pretty good against. And so even if I, like, lose land or I, you know, suffer losses over here, a lot of times it can be made up for by uh, taking advantage of a weaker player. So if you're setting up, like, a, you know, people grouping up on one person, you do want to make sure that... Uh, there's not anybody who's abnormally weak, especially to that playstyle. Like, I would just wreck Gam Herdings. Especially until Skeletus Bam Communions come out. So, Utgard could be a good target. Um, if this guy is relying on ba Black Templar to expand, which it looks like he is, um, he would be an excellent, excellent target. I mean, excellent. Um, my guys will just crush... Heavy Cav Knights. So, um, yeah, I'm not too worried. Pangea actually is probably most scary. I think his guys have enough HP they could probably survive one hit. And uh, throwing Javelins is not very nice. Man, if he were to mass... I'm not really scared of the Wardens. He can't mass Wardens. But uh, if he has enough of the Longbowmen, those will really chew me up. So, uh, can we see what scales he took? I can't really see. None of his scales have spread. But, you know, if... Or his scales may be here. Well, I don't know. Um, if he went for a bless, I'll do pretty good against man. If he went pure scales and it's just cranking out longbowmen, it's actually going to be pretty tough. That would probably be my one of my hardest matchups. Um, yeah. So, anyway... Uh, I think that's about it. So we're also trying to get blood hunting starting already this first year. So these guys are blood hunting. We're generating unrest. We have a lot of PD, which is going to help with unrest reduction. Some people don't know, but uh, cranking up PD, it's going to help patrol and catch scouts. It's also going to reduce unrest. We're not patrolling yet. We need to. So uh, to do this, I'm going to bring a bunch of slaves down here that I've, I've kind of generated in my cap. Um, we're going to get a mounted commander who is going to pick up the slaves and run them down here and patrol. Um, and this guy's going to start summoning more slaves. I want to get at least two provinces up with uh, with blood hunting. Uh, this will probably be one of them. I can probably do three or four blood hunters here. Uh, I also wait. Did I already forge one? Okay, I did, and I didn't run it out. Actually, that was kind of a problem. Uh, we need to make sure we put that uh, sanguine dousing rod on somebody next turn. Um, yeah, I can't make another one as of yet, but I will be doing that soon. So. Um, anyway, back to diplomacy. So uh, to Alm, I say, uh, Greetings, strong warriors of Alm, the eagles of the sky and the jaguars of the woods offer their blessings. We notice that we have uh, expanded rather close to your cap, though not in your cap circle. We have no ex uh, intentions of expanding farther north, so please take those lands at your leisure. Also, please take 121 before the horses take it, uh, who are already quite huge. If you feel uncomfortable with the noble Micklin so close to your capital, we can sell you the province for nine months' worth of income from it. Council of full measure, God of the sun. 
So uh, let's talk about that real quick. Um, I took this, and you remember, if you watched last episode, I think I might have even decided not to take it. Um, and the reason was because A, I could bump with him, and this wasn't a very strong army. And B, this is really close to his cap. Um, and I'm really close to his cap, and I'm really close to man's cap, or I will be, especially once I take this. So because of that, um, I uh, am a little cautious about pissing off all my neighbors. But um, I'm going to throw out what I would consider to be a pretty reasonable offer, where if he will give me nine months of income, which is a lot, like, it's going to be like 600 bucks, right? Because when this gets to zero unrest, it's going to be a lot. I did crank up PD here, which I probably shouldn't have done if I were going to give it back. Yeah, I don't know why I would crank up PD and then offer to sell it. So, whoops. How much should I put in? Kind of a lot. Like 200 gold worth? Anyway, whatever, we did it. Um, I don't think he's going to bite on this because, like, it's going to be... Yeah, it's going to be like 600 gold. So if he'll pay me 600 gold for it, then I'll probably... Oh, no, 900 gold for it, then I'll sell it. That would basically pay for me putting a fort up. And with that money he gives me... Um, a, he wouldn't give it to me unless he is planning on being my ally. Because if he gives me gold, which has an immediate payoff... Um, like, I could just take the province back from him with troops I buy. But I'm not going to do that, because uh, obviously that would not be cool. Um, but if he agrees to the deal, it means he does not have any intentions of attacking me, which uh, I'm kind of cool with, actually. Um, huge amounts of wolves would actually be kind of a problem for me to kill, at least until I get wooden warriors or mass protection up. So anyway, um, next message. Um, to man, we say, battle makes its own music, even more beautiful than the best of man's harps. The brave warriors of Micklin have suffered very few losses during expansion and have a decent army for an early war. Should you want to make common cause, let us know. We make better allies than enemies. Might let you hit your desired province count. Any news of neighbors or other diplomatic rumblings? Our peoples are not very well versed in scouting or diplomacy. Any questions you have of us? So, uh, there we go. Uh, that basically is saying, I'm offering man, and I hope he interprets it this way, that we can be allies. Um, one of the potential targets could be Ulm. Because uh, we both border Ulm. Ulm is two man south. Uh, the other target, potentially, he can't really go after Utgard. And I don't know how much... I think Pangea will border man over here. So we could potentially go after Ulm or Pangea together. Um, I could also fight man. I've thought about that. Uh, especially once you get flyers, they're kind of okay against archers uh, until he gets storm or other things that will counter them. So I don't know. I'm a little agnostic in terms of diplomacy on this. I don't really want to have four people fight me at once, but as long as it's like 2v1 or something like that, I'm probably fine. Um, and if I have one ally out of my neighbors, then it's not going to be too asymmetrical. Like if Man and I attack somebody else, and like that person finds an ally and they both attack me, that's not really that asymmetrical. It's kind of like 2v2. I can totally handle that with Micklin, I think depending on unit composition. Um, from Pythium, greeting snake people. Since we do not share a border, we make natural allies. Please keep us informed of your diplomatic situation since perhaps we can lend you a hand and maybe you us should we find ourselves attacked. How did your early game go? And to Satis, uh, you'll find the best protection from harpies who rely on killing unscripted PD commanders for raiding. Uh, is a decent amount of PD, not too much, like 10, plus one recruited ND commander with three guys on guard commander. That way the birds will get tied up on your recruited commander uh, when the PD kill while the PD kills them, and if they do manage to snipe the PD commander, the PD won't rout with yours there. Uh, we have no idea, or we have no love for Pangea and might be able to offer some help. What are his scales? Does he have a bless? So I'm asking for some intel. I'm also giving him some uh, tips for fighting harpies. Harpies are really annoying. They're a very low commitment uh, raiding squad. So, um, you know, if they die, Pangea doesn't really care. They can recruit them in wood provinces, I believe. Um, so very annoying to fight against. What um, the easiest way to prevent against harpy raids is you just... The problem with PD is all the guys are going to run forward. And then if the harpies successfully do an attack rear, they can just kill the commanders and then you lose. Um, 
unfortunately, the 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 PD will still usually kill a lot of harpies because the harpies will try to attack them as they retreat. Um, the way to prevent all this is you just have one commander stationed in your province. I'll kind of show you what it would look like. Like if I were to do it here, um, let's just say this was my commander, this eagle. Um, your PD is going to form up as a block in the middle. You just put your commander out here, which will be about where the harpies move to if they do hold and attack rear. And you put these guys on like guard commander, and then they'll just be like around your commander. And you can do this with just like, you know, a normal indie commander with four of these light infantry or militia. And that will normally be enough. And what will happen is uh, the PD will kind of run forward. The commander will get exposed. The harpies attack. Lots of times they'll kill the commander. Um, then the PD will run and attack and kill them while your commander is still alive. And uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty legit. It depends, obviously, how big the harpy squads are, but basically you can counter that by just adding more PD. Harpies are pretty bad in real combat. They really do rely on sniping commanders. Um, yeah. So, anyway, uh, that's it for this turn. Let's pull up the next one. This is my current turn, so if we have any brilliant ideas while I'm uh, talking to you, we can, of course, implement those. Uh, a message from home. Greetings, Micklin. We trust um, we find you well. Now that we are neighbors, we expect to respect. We expect you to respect our borders and know we lay claim to Dark Wisteria. Which one is that? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Um. I actually didn't think about it. I, I'm building a temple here. If he has a dude here, I could be in trouble. I might have to pump PD up next turn. Or maybe I could... I don't think it's likely he's going to attack. Especially with Pangea right here. Um, anyway. Message is right from Pangea. A crow, fl a crow flutters in with a message which reads, Greetings from my forces to the west. We are going towards the throne. Nothing more. Uh, GD. Who is GD? I should Oh, wait. Who is GD? Let me look at the pretender names. I kind of forget who's playing who. I know Daz is man. Um, GD, Pangea. Green Death. Okay. I, was like, I don't remember that as being a YouTuber name. Uh, I think this is Dwarf Comic. I think he was playing Pangea before. But uh, anyway. Um, okay. So anyway, Pangea has basically said he's going for this throne, which is fine. Um, I would be interested in taking some land from Pangea, but I don't exactly want to have a, an early war. Um, I Once I get all my forts up, um, a decent amount of PD, plus a Mickling Priest who's maybe blood hunting, um, with some dudes um, maybe on a different commander which are patrolling, uh, especially if it's like 10 Sacreds and a Mickling Priest behind 20 PD, uh, there's no kind of Micklin raiding party that's going to deal with that. I mean, a full-on army could, but um, a lot of uh, not Micklin, Pangean raiding party. And a lot of times with Pangea, the main thing you have to worry about is either a really heavy bless on White Centaur, which I think I would do pretty well against if I have a an army of my own there. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do against them that make uh, that do pretty well. Like if you figure out ways to eat their lance charges, and then uh, with my heavy damage output dudes, you can kind of just take them. Um, the the raiders are. I definitely do not want to have Pangea raiding me immediately. Like, kind of like Satis is dealing with. Okay, we had an event. Uh, a bunch of our dudes died. And then even more dudes died. It's kind of shitty. Uh, I think those might... No? Yeah, I don't know. We're just kind of getting a, some unlucky events. But, um, yeah, we, we have luck, but it hasn't spread because we're not pushing our Dominion anywhere, which is fine. I don't really want my Dominion anywhere. Um, you can see this group moved here. Um, I, oh, I already mentioned, we don't have any battles to show you. So, um, as I was mentioning last turn, we had moved this guy in with a bunch of the slaves. We gave the slaves to this mounted commander. He is going to ferry them down here where they will help with uh, patrolling. Um, I probably should send men a message um, saying, peoples of man, 
we have positioned some rebellious prisoners on our border as part of a slave camp uh, to reduce unrest in the peaceful lands of Miklin. Please take no concern. Um, yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say. He's going to be scared when he sees a bunch of people on his border. Um, we are going to, okay, so this, we're going to go attack this. Now, this province is a bunch of light infantry, crossbowmen, and heavy infantry. This is the same kind of thing that actually caused me a bunch of trouble, which actually, you know, looking at it, why am I not taking some slaves? Because I need some people to kind of eat the crossbow stuff. Yeah, we're going to take some of the slaves. Um, I don't know how much of the crossbow fire they will eat, but hopefully they will eat some of it. And if they don't eat any of it, then um, they'll at least run into melee with the crossbows. Uh, I think this is fine. This is kind of enough of the Jaguar Warriors where I think the crossbow fire will get spread out amongst them too. I don't know. We're This is a little dicey. The other thing we're doing is we picked up some more Hoburg in this province. We've got some more Sacreds. They're basically running down here, and then we're going to combine forces and attack here. So that's going to happen. Um, the other thing we're doing is you can see we finally got uh, these guys who are going to run out and make their way into the lake system. Um, I will fight whoever's in the lake. I'm going to fight for the lake. Um, I don't care who thinks they have gotten their dudes in here. Utgard cannot really do it unless they have a special province. Ulm can't really do it. I don't know who else is up here. In terms of other nations who can get into the lake system, Satis can with Undead, but not really immediately. They kind of, I don't think they, they have any way of immediately jumping in the lake. They they kind of, it would be tricky, but they, they it's a mid-game thing they can do, not in an early game. Um, Pythium can't, um, Daz cannot, Ulm cannot, uh, I can, Pythium can't, Pangea cannot, um, Midgard can't, and neither can Utgard. So I'm really the only one set up to get in there. So if somebody found Mercs or Indies or whatever, I will fight them tooth and nail, and I'm going to have this whole lake system. So anyway, that's how that's going to be. Now, the thing is, to get in there, we have to get through these um, Jaguar tribe slingers, which normally you would say, okay, these guys suck. The problem is, is they do not suck against my units. These guys actually suck in some ways. Uh, we have a Bronze Curious, which means uh, any of the slings which hit our chest will be fine against, but we have no helmet, um, and our base natural protection is low, so basically slings that hit our heads will do a lot of damage, uh, and our luck, which is our defensive part of our bless, is good against elites, but it is not good against massed units, which are going to be throwing rocks at us. So, uh, we have to deal with that somehow. How we're going to deal with it is making more militia. We're going to pick up these militia next turn. We're going to add them here, and then we're going to charge them in. That's going to be part one. Um, part two is we're running in with some blade, uh, blood slaves, and these guys we are going to basically be doing a divine blessing and then summon imps. And uh, we only have blood one. Or no, we have blood two. Okay, so we can get a lot of imps off, actually. And we will flood them with imps, and then that will break us into the water. Uh, once we're in the water, we do not have to worry about uh, ranged attacks. Um, and these guys will do much better in combat. But it could be tricky. Um, yeah, I don't know. If there is like a 70 or 80 person army here, I'm going to be kind of in trouble. I don't know what I'm going to do. But we'll figure that out. Um, first mission is just to take this. Um, yeah. So anyway, that is that. Uh, we're building a lab here so I can potentially also get more slaves to go onto him this turn if I need to. Um, okay, we're attacking these guys. We've got the slaves. We're good to go here. Um, these guys are moving in. 
Uh, we are not going to build a palisade. This guy is just going to wait. Hopefully next turn we can start. Um, yeah, anyway, that's fine. Then what else? We've got... I think that's about it for this particular turn. Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, in terms of recruitment, we're now switching over to Eagle Warriors. We're going to be getting... I have basically been making Miklin Priests out of here, with that one exception of the Rain King. And the reason is because I need to save all of my early game money to get my infrastructure up absolutely as fast as possible in case I get rushed. Um, or people team up against me. I want to get these forts and temples out and labs out uh, as soon as I can to get my blood economy going. Uh, not even really research economy, blood economy. Um, I, as soon as I get blood four, uh, yeah, things are really going to take off. And then I really only have one other research goal uh, for this game, and that is alt seven. There are other things that will be useful, but by far and away, this is the big one for me. Uh, you know, I have fire resistance built in my bless. If I drop mass protection on my dudes, uh, stuff is going to go crazy. So, um, yeah, we're getting this guy so we can start nature site searching because I'm going to want nature gems. Um, and then I'm also potentially going to probably have him come out here with a bunch of my eagle warriors. So I'm going to have these three, and then I'm also going to have these, what, seven? So that's going to be ten. They can probably come out here and kill the lizards, which will be fine. Um, and then we can site search both of these. So I'm probably going to like move, site search, move, something like that. Um, yeah. There's a death site here too. You can see death uh, and turmoil. And this does not have anybody's scales in it. So um, I'm not sure what causes turmoil. I'll have to research. I know normally the things that cause uh, death are death sites. So anyway, we're going to search for those. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So uh, yeah, I think so far things are going good. Um, do I need to respond to Pangea? I'll, I'll send Pangea a message. Uh, no worries. Good luck on the throne. Uh, have you seen anyone's bless? Let's see if we can pry some information out of him. Um, one of the things I'm bad at is scouting. I don't have tons of scouts everywhere. One of the things I'm typically good at is soliciting information from players without scouts. So anyway, we'll see. Hopefully they tell me something that's useful. Um, I think that's it. Do we want to get... We, we do have some additional resources and recruitment points, which, you know, I could turn into Jaguar Warriors. These guys take way more... Recruitment points in my Eagle Warriors. They take like twice as many. I think I want Eagle Warriors here though. Yeah. Um, so in terms of, uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about recruitment real quick. Um, this I can do, I can get my astral site searching going. I don't know how important this is going to be. Um, in, a, in a late game where I'm going to be doing horror spam and things like this, this could be very important. Um, if we look at horrors, I think they're Har like lesser horrors, which is what these guys would cast. They're um Oh, they're only blood five. Crap. And I'm already going to blood four. Ooh man. I love Send Horror. We may make an exception. We may I have to I'm gonna have to seriously wait. What else is at blood five for me? Um, okay, I cannot remember which one of these is the assassin. If this one is the assassin, which I think it is, I may have to go to blood five before I run up alteration. Um, I'm not going to be recruiting many of these guys, but really having access to sin lesser horror and all I'm going to need is, oh crap. Okay, so to get Send a Lesser Horror online, this guy is um, Blood 2, Astral 2. I need to be at Astral 3, so I need one of the Astral Boosters. Now, how am I going to get that? That's going to be tricky. Um, 
if I get to construction six, I can make the skull cap. Um, but I'm not going to go to construction six. Um, alternatively, I have to have Earth Astral to get that. And I don't have it on my Pretender. Um, and I don't have it on any mages. So there's basically no way that's going to happen. I could trade for it. Um, Man won't have it. Pangea. I think Late Age Pangea might have Earth Astral. I can ask him. But people are probably not going to want to forge me boosters. I don't know. Ulm definitely has it. Maybe Ulm. Um, I'm going to send a message to Ulm too. Uh, greetings. Again. Strong warriors of Ulm. Uh, perhaps we can trade. Um, are you running up construction? Early? And if so, how far? We have the need of an astral booster. If that might be something you can produce. Crystal coin or starshine skullcap. Any uh, any other news? Okay, so anyway. That is probably okay. Um, this is getting to be a long episode, sorry guys, but you were... It's kind of fun uh, going through this when you haven't submitted it, because you can't kind of change things. So uh, anyway, that's basically it. We're going to be coming this way. We're going to be using Bind Imps to take this, and then praying to God, this is a weak water province. Once we get in here, we have two options, so hopefully we can find a way to kind of finagle our way through. Um, we're probably going to be... Hopefully, whatever there is here, we're going to recruit as many of them as we can and then join them up to make one mass. I do not want to make another group of rain warriors terribly soon from my capital. Maybe I should, uh, but I'm not really planning on it. Um, once I get underwater, though, um, I can build, I believe, forts. And with those forts, I can recruit uh, my water mages, which are going to establish dominance underwater, uh, especially if I run up Conjuration. Uh, there's not too much I can do underwater with blood or construction, so I, I would have to make a decision here. One of the reasons to go up Conjuration is to get Summon Jaguars, which is a pretty awesome spell. It's very, very mage turn efficient. You get 17 Sacred Jaguars for one mage turn. It will require a lot of nature gems, but we'll make a decision. If we find a lot of nature sites in this jungle, it's going to make going up construction more and more valuable. Uh, and then if we feel threatened in the water, it's going to also make uh, Conjuration more and more valuable. But uh, anyway, uh, I think that's it for this turn and for this episode. I thank you guys for watching, and I'm going to remember to actually submit my turn uh, again now that we've made changes, of course I forgot to uh, last time. So anyway, hope you're enjoying the series, and I actually, I, I myself, you know, it's funny because I subscribe to a lot of these players anyway uh, to kind of watch their YouTube streams, so it's really funny because I see their episodes popping up on my feed, and I'm like, oh shit, I really want to watch that. And I'm like, oh wait, but I can't. But I can't. But uh, anyway, I hope you're enjoying watching mine, and I'm certainly looking forward to watching everyone else's. So uh, thank you guys. See you next time.